So 2022, uh, according to geometry, the line question. So here we're given two points, and they're their endpoints of a line segment. So what we can do here is we can either use the formula or we can use ratio. So let's get our head around it here. We've got two points, A and B. And they're the ends of a line segment. Find the coordinate of C, which divides AB in the ratio fours to one. So we want to work out what C is. Now there is a formula in your formula book, and it's probably the easiest to work with that. So page 12, page 13, I'm not sure your formula is BX1 plus AX2 over B plus A, comma, BY1 plus AY2, B plus A. And remember your A and B is just the ratio here of four is to one. Now, if we're filling in or labeling each of these, there's my A, the first one, there's my B. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Horse all my values in. So, BX1, it's one times X1, which is eight, plus AX2, which is my four, times my X2, which is minus one, over B plus A, which is one plus four, which is five. Do the same on the other side of the formula. BY1, which is one times minus four, plus AY2, which is four times three, over B plus A, which is five. I have feck all space there. Tidy that up. I have eight minus four, which is four over five. And minus four plus 12 is eight over five. And that's your answer. Alternatively, some of you might as well split that up using ratios. So you worked out the distance between eight and minus one, which is nine units. Divide that by five, which is nine over five and then take it away from eight. Take it away from eight because I'm going downhill. So eight, oh no, sorry. What did we say there? Um, nine units, divide that by five, multiply that by four because it's four units then, and then eight, subtract that as I'm going downhill and we get four over five, which we said there. Repeat there for your y coordinates, the distance between minus four and three, seven. So seven divided by five, times that by four. And are we going uphill or are we going downhill? We're going from a minus to a positive, we're going uphill. So it's minus four plus that answer, and we get eight over five. So two ways, whatever way you would have done. Next one. The line L, L has slope M. So the slope is equal to M. It contains the point QR, um, and they're all positive. Find the coordinates of the point where it cuts the y-axis. Now, once I see cuts the y-axis, I'm thinking cuts the y-axis when x is equal to zero. So my x-coordinate is going to be zero. So down here, when I'm writing x, y, my x is going to be zero. Find it in terms of m, q, and r. So I'm not going to work out the value of m, q, or r. I'm just going to have an expression with m, q, and r in it. So the easiest way to do this is find the equation of the line L. Once I have that, horse in x to be zero, and I'll get my um, other point, or my point y then, or my value for y. So I'll get my equation of my line. Two things I need from the equation of the line is my slope, which is m, and my point, which is qr. Label in point, x1, y1, and fill it in to the equation of the line, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Tidy that up, y minus r, is equal to m times x minus x1, which is q. I have brackets there, multiply those out. y minus r is equal to mx minus qm. And here find the coordinates, a coordinates made up of an x and a y, or cuts the y-axis. Remember, cuts the y-axis when x is equal to zero. I'm going to put anything with x equal to zero. So I've got y minus r. That disappears because m times zero is zero minus qm. And to work out what y is, bring across my minus r, r minus qm, or minus qm plus r. So my value there is zero, which is my x value, and r minus qm. And the third part of this, the line k has slope of minus two, the line j makes an angle of 30 degrees. So I've got two lines intersecting with each other here. 
One's going downhill, now this is not 30 degrees, but sure what odds. My M is minus two, and that's for line K. And the other one, my line is J, it makes an angle of 30 degrees with it. Um, find one possible value of the slope. Now I'm thinking here, the angle between two lines formula there on page 19, page 18, 19, sorry, these formulas are, are in. And it's going to be a brute of an answer when you see you write it in that form there. So I'm going to write out your formula here. So tan theta is equal to, I use the modulus signs or the absolute value here, 1 plus m1 m2. I'm going to fill in, my angle there is 30 degrees, so tan of 30 is equal to m1, doesn't matter what I call m1 or m2, I'm just calling m1 the first slope which is minus 2, minus, and I'll just call it m from now on so I don't think it's a squared later on, over 1 plus m1 which is minus 2 times m. Tidy that up, make sure our calculator's in degrees, which is shown by that D. Tan of 30 is root three over three. Now I know from page 13, yeah, that's where the page 13, that tan 30 is one over root three. It's the same thing, but I'm gonna work with one over root three. Just makes it a bit simpler, but you'll get the same answer. One over root three is equal to my top line there. And I'll just multiply with that bracket, one minus two n. This stage I'll cross multiply. My root three, the modulus signs there, sorry, not brackets. And to get rid of that modulus signs, I square both sides. Um, so I'm gonna square one minus two m, one times that's gonna be the same as it. So one minus two m all to be squared. Root three, don't forget to square her. And minus two minus m all to be squared. Whatever way you want to square it out. You could square the first, multiply the two together and double it, square the last, root three squared is three, times square the first, multiply the two together and double it, and square the last. Keep tidying that up for yourself. It's starting to look like a quadratic. I'll get my minus b formula to get that monstrosity into the form which it asks for. And then tidy that up once more. My m squared is 4m squared minus 3m squared is 1m squared. Minus 4m minus 12m is minus 16m. And 1 minus 12 is minus 11 is equal to 0. Do my minus b formula. A, b and c. A is 1. B is minus 16. C is minus 11. Throw it into your minus b formula. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared. Minus 4 a C all over 2A. Throw that in. Hope we get something in the form that it asks. Eight plus five root three. I may as well work out the other answer. It says for one. 8 minus 5 root 3. Does that look what it's asked for? D plus E root F. Um, so yeah, D plus E root F. My D is 8, my E is 5, and my F is 3.